Hi, this is Bartosz Miluski with the third installment of the C++ concurrency series. Today I would like to talk about shared memory concurrency. There are good things and bad things about shared memory. The good thing is performance. Shared memory as a way of communication between threads is the fastest at least on the current uh, batch of processors, multi-cores. On the other hand, shared memory programming is hard. It's very easy to make mistakes and there are so many ways to shoot yourself in the foot. And in fact, the more performance you're trying to squeeze from your multiprocessors, the more likely you are to encounter concurrency bugs. Here's the example from my previous tutorial. It uses shared memory concurrency. The shared variable here is this integer i, which is a local variable inside test. It's being passed by reference to the thread constructor and then it's being passed by reference to the thread function. There are several problems with this program, and I've shown you just one of them, namely the variable going out of scope. Normally, when we call a function and pass it a reference to a local variable, we have to worry about this function inadvertently storing this reference for later in some data structure. Now here, even if the function doesn't store this reference, because we don't see an explicit store of i inside thread function, we still have a problem. And the problem stems from the fact that each thread has its own stack. So when the thread is created, a new stack is allocated and whatever arguments were passed to the thread constructor, they are copied onto this stack. So when the thread function is called, it sees the, its arguments on the stack. In this case, it will see a reference, the address of this variable, which lives on a different stack. It lives on the main threads stack. And this reference in, in the case of this program, survives longer than the data that it's re referring to. But there is another problem with this program. Because the first problem could be solved by just moving this thread join into the scope of test. So when join is reached, when, when join is executed, all threads have already finished executing right and i is still in the scope of test so the lifetime of i is fine the other problem is that all of these threads are sharing a reference to the same location and while the threads are starting the value at this location is changing see inside test i changes from zero to nine. And while the threads are executing, they are seeing a momentary value of i. So i could be two, i could be zero, i could be seven. And it has nothing to do with the value of i when the thread was constructed, when the constructor was called. And the value that the thread is seeing depends on the timing of the thread whether the thread started executing earlier or later, it will see a different value. And this kind of dependence on the timing of threads is called a race. Two threads or multiple threads are racing to access the same variable, whether it's one of threads is writing, the other thread is reading or also writing. That's the definition of a race. Here's a slightly more realistic example of a data race. 
I have a list. It's a list of integers, a singly linked list of integers. So it has a head pointer that points to the first node and it's initialized to null pointer. That's also a new C++ 11 thing. And it has a method insert that inserts a new node. So let me implement this method. Auto. I'm going to use auto because I don't want to repeat the type that I'm allocating. So new node of x. Now I have to set the next pointer, node underscore next, and I'm going to set it to the current head, because I'm inserting this in, in the beginning of the list. And finally I have to set the head to my node. Okay, this is a standard implementation of a singly linked list. Now I have a thread function here that takes this list by reference, that's very important, because I want to share the list, and it just inserts a hundred integers into it. Now in the main routine I will create a list, list and I will pass a reference std ref to this list. Okay, and finally at the end of the of main I wanna make sure that all the elements are in the list, so let me just count them. Total equals list dot count. Okay, list is a local variable here, so you might think, uh, you know, oh, I'm passing a reference to a local variable, but, but as I explained, since join is done within the scope, all the threads will finish before we exit the scope. So the reference to list will be valid all this time. However, all of them are sharing the reference to the same list. So let me compile the program and run it. Okay, the total is 1000, that's fine. Excellent. Let me run it again. The total is 1000 again. The program seems to be correct. Oh, no, it's not. Now it's 999. We have just lost one element in the list. And this is typical of, of data races, that you run your program many times and it runs correctly. You don't see any problems. And then once upon a time, the thread timings are such that the error is reproduced. And hopefully this happens during testing, but it sometimes happens after the product, the program has been deployed to your clients. And that's a really bad thing. Let's analyze what has just happened. For simplicity, uh, we'll analyze just two threads, thread A and thread B. Both of these threads are executing the insert method. Now the list has, let's start with just one element, node 0. So there is a head pointing to node 0, and the next pointer in node 0 is uh, pointing to, the, to null pointer. Okay, so thread A is executing insert, and it's creating a new node. Okay, let's create a new node. Okay, here's my new node. Let's call it node 1. Now, thread A is setting the next pointer of the node to, 
to head. Now head is pointing at node 0, right? So the next pointer of node 1 will be pointing to node 0 as well. Now let's see what thread B is doing. It's executing the same code, so it creates a new node. Okay, new node. Let's call this node 2. And it's setting the next pointer to the current value of head. Okay, the current value of head is node 0, right? So it's pointing next to node 0. Let's go back to thread A then. Okay, thread A is, is here. It's setting head to node. Okay, so head will now be pointing to node. Okay, thread A is done. It has linked in node 1 into the list. But thread B hasn't finished yet. Its next instruction is also head equals node. Okay, so head is pointing to node 2. And what happened? Node 1 suddenly is no longer in the list. The two threads were racing and they created this situation, the corruption of the shared data structure. Node 1 has just disappeared. After showing you all these buggy programs, maybe it's a good time now to look at something that actually works and is guaranteed to work based on some first principles that I will explain. So here's a program. It's a very simple program, so bear with me. It creates a list, and this is the list that will be shared between the two threads. And the main thread pushes back 16 doubles between 0 and 2 pi on the list. And then it starts a thread, passes it a reference to this list, so this is where sharing starts, and the thread function is to sign. Here it is. It just iterates over the list, and for each x in the list, it replaces it. Look at the ampersand here. So it is a reference to x, so it can replace it with the sign of x. In the meanwhile, the main thread calls join and blocks. When join returns, it means that the thread function has finished its job. The main thread takes turn accessing the list. This time it iterates over the list and outputs sort of a graph of the sine wave using asterisks. So let me run this program and show you the output. Here it is. It's a nice sine wave. Now you might think this is a trivial program. It obviously works. The two threads are taking turns, right? There is never real concurrency there. But even this simple program illustrates some very deep principles involved in shared memory concurrency. So let me talk more about it. Here's a picture that illustrates what happened in the program. Thread A is on the left, thread B is on the right. Time goes from top to bottom. Thread A is first to access the data structure. Then it creates the worker thread. And from this point on, it doesn't access the shared data structure. This is sort of a self-imposed ban. Finally, it calls thread join and blocks. When thread join returns, it is now free to access the data structure again. In the meanwhile, thread B, well, it starts the thread function. It can freely access the data structure, and then it terminates, triggering the return from thread join. Now, this pattern of 
taking turns forms the basis of shared memory concurrency. So it's good to understand what the theory behind it is. So when two threads are running, they could be running on separate cores, and they are running independently. What does it mean to take turns? It means the threads have to communicate somehow. One thread has to say, hello, it's your turn now. And the other thread has to say, OK, it's my turn. And it accesses the data structure. And then again, it says, hello, now it's your turn. And the other thread says, OK, it's my turn. These points of communication, they are called synchronization points. And in this uh, particular program, we have these four synchronization points, thread creation and the exit from thread join, the beginning of thread function, and the end of thread function. And these synchronization points are connected with these blue arrows, which mean happens before, quote unquote happens before. Happens before is a very important relation, and it's very well defined. Thread creation always happens before the start of the thread function. The end of the thread function always happens before the exit from thread join. So this is how this intuition of taking turns can be described in a more rigorous language of synchronization points and happens before relationships. And it might seem in this case that's uh, an overkill because our intuition here is correct. But in concurrency, it often happens that our intuitions are in conflict with reality. And in that case, it's a good thing to have some kind of rigorous language to talk about concurrency. This program is correct, but let me play with it a little bit more and make it buggy. Okay, there is a period of time between thread creation and join when there is the self-imposed ban on accessing the shared data structure. But the compiler doesn't know about it. So if I move this access right between the two, the compiler will not complain. But this program has a data race now, because there are two threads that are accessing the list, the shared list, at the same time. So let's run this program and see what happens. Okay, here's the result. Well, it's the same result as before, so it doesn't look like the program is broken, right? But we know that data races depend on timing. The bugs don't show all the time. But we can change the timing. I can add a sleep in the beginning of the thread function. Now, sleep is defined in std this thread because I want this thread, the current thread, to sleep and it's called sleep4 and we pass it a duration. Now durations are defined in the new header include called chrono So let's put a duration here, std chrono in seconds, and let's say just one second. That's plenty. So let me compile this program and run it and see what happens. Okay, this time we got a different result. This is actually the original data that I put in the list. OK. Well, let's see if we can actually fix this program in such a way that the compiler will help us. What if we pass this list not by reference, but if we move it instead? 
Okay, when we move the list, it means the original list becomes invalid. In this case, it means it becomes empty. Okay, the thread function will have to take it by an R value reference to use the move semantics. All right, and let's compile this program and run it and see what happens now. Okay, this is the result. Well, nothing happened. Nothing was printed. Why so? Because the list after the move is invalid. What does it mean in the case of the list? It means it's empty. So we just iterated over an empty list. The list has been moved from the main thread to the worker thread and the main thread has no longer has access to it. And in fact, we can take this printout, move it to the thread function, and it will print the result as expected. Okay? Here it is. Here's the picture that shows how this program works. We no longer have shared data. Instead, we have unique data. Unique data is uh, a piece of data that has a single owner at all times. It may change the owner, and the change of the owner is done through move semantics. So we start in thread A, which creates this unique data and accesses it. Then it creates another thread, thread B, and instead of passing the argument by reference, it moves it. Now the same unique data belongs to thread B, and thread B can safely access it. At that time, thread A loses access to the data. So even if the programmer tried to access it, it won't work. Well, in our case, it would access an empty list. The only thing missing in this picture is passing the unique data back to thread A. But we still don't know how to return results from a thread. And this is something for the next tutorial.